This is going to be part 5 of the tutorial series and I do recommend checking out the previous slash command video if you haven't already. I've uploaded that code into this uh, repository as well. So the repository link is down in the description and if you haven't watched the video yet, I'll be posting it in the top right hand corner right now. So the first thing we'll need to do is change up the events so we're able to actually handle these buttons. So if you look here in interaction create at the moment, we have function ignoring any kind of interaction that is not a command type interaction however we want it to be able to handle buttons so let's go ahead and add that in I'm going to pull this out of here and create a new function called handle slash command and it's going to take in bot and interaction and let's have that lead into here I'm going to format that and here instead of skipping if it's a command we will go ahead and call the handle slash command I can't spell today with bot and interaction and then otherwise if the interaction is a uh, button then we will call a function called handle button and also pass in the uh, bot and interaction let's go ahead and create that now const handle button equals bot interaction and in here the first thing we'll do is deconstruct the client object from the bot and we will also need that here as well since we are using that there um, we will not need it here and uh, one thing that we're going to be doing is each button has a, a custom ID to it. And the custom ID allows you to label buttons with a string. And we're going to format the string so it looks something like this. We'll have the name of the button and we'll have parameter 1, dash parameter 2, dash and so forth. So we're uh, essentially it's going to be the same thing as how we handled the commands in the very first video. Uh, sorry, the very second video. Um, but instead of spaces, we're going to be using these dashes instead as separators. So here we'll start with name and everything else is going to be put into a variable called params. And we're going to grab the custom ID and we're going to split it by the dashes. So this is going to take that string and it's going to split it into an array divided by these dashes. So we have the first element is going to be the name of the button and the rest is going to be the parameters. Now let's go ahead and grab our button. So client.buttons.get name. It's going to grab our button and if there's no button, then we're just going to return because that's invalid. Otherwise, we're going to run the button. We're going to pass in interaction and we're going to pass in the parameters. Okay, now we're finished with interaction create. The next step that we need to take is actually add the handler for the button so we can load those into our bot. So what I'm going to do is take my code from slash commands, I'm going to copy and paste it so it duplicates the file and I'm just going to rename this to be buttons.js and for those of you that aren't aware I just select it control C control V it. And here in buttons uh, most of the things are going to stay the same except we're going to change these to say buttons instead. And I'm going to ch change these to buttons. And this will be buttons. And this will say buttons. And there we go. And the other thing that we'll need to do is go to index. And over here, we'll need to add in another collection here. We're going to call it buttons. And we're also going to load these in. So I'm going to set it up like this and this as well. Load buttons. And there we go. Now let us actually create our buttons for the role. So let's create a new folder. We're going to call this buttons. And inside of it, we're going to create roles. Uh, role.js 
this is going to be including the function that is going to be called when the button is clicked. So similar to how we uh, formatted the other function, uh, the other commands, we're going to have name role, and we're going to have the run function, take in the bot interaction and the parameters parameters and the first thing we'll do is get the role ID and this is going to be the first parameter um, and then we will want to check to make sure that this interaction was run in a guild so if this uh, statement here is true that means the guild object does not exist of the in from the interaction which means this was not run in a guild for some reason so we'll respond with an error interaction.reply and I'm going to respond with uh, content this command can only be used in a guild and I'm going to make this ephemeral true uh, next we're going to grab the role so let's get the role from the guild so what this is doing is it's taking the role manager from the guild and we're going to go ahead and try to fetch that role and we're going to check to make sure that role exists. So if there's no role, um, in case that role was deleted or changed somehow, we're going to return with an error. So interaction dot reply content role not found and ephemeral is going to be true. And what ephemeral does is it replies with a message that's only seeable by the person that executed or clicked the button in the first place and nobody else. And finally, we'll need to grab the actual member object. So we'll get this from the uh, guild uh, members. Um, so this is the uh, member manager. So we're going to fetch by the ID of the member. Um, and now here we'll want to check if the member already has the role. What we'll want to do is remove the role. If the member doesn't have the role, we'll want to add the role. So here let's add if member.roles.cache.has the role. Then let's go ahead and remove it from them. And we'll reply with a message. Return interaction dot reply. Um, let's do this content. Removed the role. We'll add role dot name from you. And ephemeral is going to be true. And otherwise, this means that the member um, doesn't have the role we will go ahead and add the role to them and return interaction dot reply content added the role oops these need to be backticks role dot name to you ephemeral is true and there we go. Uh, this should be our command being finished. Now, one more thing that we will need to do in order to test out our buttons is we'll need to actually send a message with these buttons. So we'll go ahead and create an additional command for that. The purpose of the command that we're about to create is not for actually running anything important, but just for the sake of easily creating one of these messages with the buttons. So under commands, I'm gonna go ahead and create a new category called test and I will go ahead and create a new file we'll call it role selector in here uh, we'll need to first import in a couple of things message action row message button and message embed from discord.js uh, we'll be using these a bit later in here and then we'll want to export um, name of the file role, sele role selector uh, category is test um, we're going to have dev only be true 
since this is just for testing and run async we'll have client message args and this is going to be passed in and we'll send a message uh, we'll have an embed here we'll just uh, include a little bit of information embed uh, set title select role description select roles from the buttons below and we'll give it a color of blue okay and now this is the embed so this is only going to send the embed now we need to add the buttons uh, these buttons are known to discord api as components so components um, let me add a comma here and these components are divided up into individual rows so you can have a i think up to uh, a certain number of buttons or or um, other additional interactions like the menu selectors per row so first thing we'll need to do is create a row message action row and we'll add components um, and each of these components is going to be an actual message button itself so message button and dot set custom id now here is where the key element comes in so we called this button a role so that's our unique identifier so we're going to call this role and i'm going to add a dash and here i'm going to go ahead and paste a uh, role id um, so this is just some arbitrary role um, this is just a role in my server called five and we're going to set the style which is going to give it a color um, primary is like the blue color danger would give you like a red color i'm going to set it to primary which is going to be the blue color and I'm going to set the label which is the uh, like the what's actually displayed on the button itself i'm going to label with five and let's go ahead and test this out so node index.js run the code it seems like everything went smoothly so let's now go to the discord so over here we'll go ahead and run roles selector and we can see it's sent an embed with a button here. Let's go ahead and click on the button. And it's added the rule 5 to me. And if I click on it again, it should remove that rule from me. And there we go. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did so, please leave a like down below. Hit that subscribe button. And let me know in the comment section if there's any specific types of tutorials that you want me to continue with. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in the next one.